here we go. We have the car up in the air. We're going to go chalk the rear wheels and disconnect the battery so we can start pulling off the front end and getting into our project. So we're going to slide in our wheel chalk. There you go. And come back here and disconnect the battery. So the battery is obviously, as you can see, located here in the trunk. Underneath the spare tire, we've removed it. Assumably, you'll know how to do that. Uh, it is a 10 millimeter. We're gonna loosen the positive cable here. And once we remove that, that'll take all the electricity out. We're gonna slide that cap over there so it doesn't come back. We don't have to worry about it. We're gonna take this 10 millimeter out. And when I take the, the battery power off, I always do the positive and negative. Overkill, don't really need to do it, but if you're back here, one extra step isn't gonna hurt so anything. So we disconnected the battery and we're gonna come up and pull the driver's side and then here's the passenger side wheel off. Real easy, 17 millimeter impact. Go ahead and pull it out. If you have the wheel caps, uh, you're gonna wanna pull those. I use uh, a pair of needle nose pliers and just pull the caps out. A quick note about the battery, disconnecting the battery. When doing work on the car, there's a lot of questions of uh, what fuse does this if, if you're working up where it's fuel related uh, in the engine compartment. Obviously, when you pull the battery, you, you don't have to worry about pulling fuses for fuel pumps and, and some of these other auxiliary things because the battery will be pulled. So something to note uh, as another good important reason to pull the battery. So as we're here, we're going to pull this front tire off and then we're going to get into uh, pulling the inner fender liner out so we can start getting to that front, uh, front bumper. All right, so we got the tire off pretty easy. We used our uh, 17 millimeter impact to get that off. Now we're gonna have to take this inner fender liner off if we're gonna get to the, the bolts in here that we want to remove. Um, pretty easy in this particular section. It's gonna be a number of T20s. The one here, 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 here. You're gonna follow them all in the fender. You're, the entire front fender liner is going to be made a lot easier to take it out. There are a couple, you can't really see it in the camera, but there are a couple uh, plastic retainers. I just use a 10 millimeter on a T handle uh, and they came out really, really easy. So we're going to remove the front uh, fender liner with the T20s and a couple of those 10 millimeters and we'll be right back. So we're able to get the inner fender liner out. The next step is to come underneath here and to get the under body belly pan out. Follows the same things. Some of these are, are Torx. Some of them are actually flathead. But this panel right here we're gonna wanna remove. And we successfully got our inner fender liner out. Just wanna show you really quick these were those 10 millimeter uh, plastic screws I was talking about. Relatively easy. Um, so we're going to pull out the belly pan here and then what we're looking... Alright, here we go. Inner fender lighter's out. We're getting ready to pull the uh, under tray. But here's what we're trying to access. Let's get in here and see if we can see it here. This bolt right here. Let's get a little better angle there. Right there. There's one there. And there would be one. Down a little bit further here, which you can't really see really well. Let me try to get the light in there a little bit better. There's that stud you can see right there. There would be a nut on there that looked just like that. Hold on, let's set the light up. There would, the, what you're taking off 
is this. But apparently somebody put this bumper on quick disconnect. Somebody's already been in here, so it's it's not there. It's a 10 millimeter. We're going to go in there. We're going to pull those out and go on from okay, there. Okay, so we pulled out those 10 millimeters. Then you're going to come up here, and there's a 30 millimeter T Torx right there. And right here, after you get that sorted, as you can see, I've already pulled it back. The bumper pulls right, pulls right out. There was a, a plug that I had to remove in there, but you come on the other side, same thing, and you can see right here, you see the bumper. Wow. Oh, okay. That literally is it right there. I got the bumper sitting on the stops, but I thought it was going to be a little bit harder than that, but it's really just pulling the the bottom belly pan off, those two 10 millimeters that are holding on right here and here on each side. This is just a friction fit. It came out. I thought maybe I had to pull a screw here, but I didn't. I'll have to put that back in. Here is this plug you're going to want to be careful of. And then, like I said, those T30s up top and it just pulled right off. So I'm going to pull this out and we'll go from and there. Now we're going to proceed to see what we can do to get the, the front core support off. It looks like it's going to be quite an undertaking. Uh, mm -hmm. On the older cars, I remember we were able to uh, pull the front crash bar uh, to access uh, what looks like the power steering cooler here, uh, the AC condenser, uh, and then the radiator. Next thing I'm going to do, uh, regardless of whether we need to uh, do them or not, is I'm just going to remove the headlights. Headlights is a, T, uh, a T30 or T27 works. There's bolts there, there's a bolt here, and then you're going to find this bolt right back there. Uh, let me see if I can get on it. Kind of hard to see, but this bolt right here, right there. Um, these two bolts that you take out, these two T30s here and there in the back, they don't need to be removed. You can just loosen them, loosen them, and then uh, the headlights come out. So we're gonna we're gonna take those off right now and check back in. Okay, so headlights are out. Uh, and it was as easy as pulling uh, the two top T30 bolts, as we mentioned, uh, and then obviously have to disconnect the uh, the harness for um, for the headlights themselves, as far as uh, plugging them into the body. So I'm looking at going and getting out the crash bar. So if you're wondering what the crash bar is, uh, that's this front, this front part right here. It seems to be in front of uh, a lot of components uh, that we're going to want to swing out of the way. Getting ready to try to take off the front bumper support. As you can see, we've threaded in a bolt here. We've removed the M10 bolt from up there. There's three M10 bolts. Uh, then there is a 13 millimeter bolt that you're going to find on the underside connected to this bracket here on the outside that, uh, that, that bolt is a 10 millimeter bolt, 13 millimeter bolt. You're going to do the same thing on both sides. This this is pretty easy uh, air ducting. It's not bolted to anything. It's just a, an interference fit. What you're going to do is push uh, and it pushes over on the top and the bottom and then that releases it. And you can pull it up and out of the way, which we'll do here in a minute. So we're going to finish taking the bolts out. And see. You have to go and you have the headlight washers on, on the car. Right here you can see it in the camera. 
there's a blue tab here. That tab pushes in and comes out. Uh, it's pretty easy. You're going to need to do that on both sides. And then in the back, uh, that releases the hose from its connection point. The other things that you're going to want to do is you're going to have to get in here and remove some of the wiring unless you want to be chasing the wiring all the way back to its source to pull it off, which you probably don't want to do. Uh, I didn't. So real simple, we got in here and flathead screwdriver, pop the flathead screwdriver under, work it up, comes out there, pull that connection up and just leave it out of the way. You're going to have to disconnect the horn, pull the connections for that, and then over here on this side you're going to have to disconnect your blue hose from your uh, headlight washer system. After you have that, you have all of your M10 pull bolts out, you have your 13 millimeter bolt out. The bumper at that point is just held on by interference clips. You can pull that out. Over on the passenger side, you have a module, so you have to be careful over there. But on the driver's side, you should be able to just slide it right out. And there we go. What we're looking to do is we're going to take off right here. This is the power steering cooler. Behind that, you've got your air, conden your air conditioning heat exchanger. Then, if you look here, this is your heat exchanger for the... Uh, intercooler for the turbos. As you'll notice these obviously are radiators and and they work by having air go past them. So you've got an air deflector that we've removed over here. Um, I'm going to do the same side the same thing over here on this side. The real nice thing that if if you've messed with some of these before they tend to be finicky but right here there's a tab right here and right here, you just push in on it if you can hear this. That little snap. There you go. It's pretty easy. There you go. They both snapped. This appears, you can't see it, but I'm going to pull this out. This goes to the headlight. Headlight. Okay. So we've got that out of the way. Oh, there's some nice leaves in there. So now that we've gotten these out of the way, we're going to move on to the next. Next so in step. our continuous pursuit to get the front core support off, now we're at the point where we're trying to pull uh, the air conditioning heat exchanger out. Um, right here, there's tabs here and, and down here. The AC condenser on both sides slips into these. It's not actually bolted to anything. On the side right here, there's... Uh, there's, I think, a T20 that I pulled out. To get the AC condenser out, down here, it just slides right in. Up here, you have to push this tab back to release, allowing the core to come up. There's a lip up top here. As you can see, I just slid it down so you can see. This tab right here, you push in, and then it'll allow you to push up, which I can't do with two hands. What you're going to run into next is the AC condenser will come up and hit the bottom of your air intake. So to take this intake off to allow you to get the AC off to swing it out of the way. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't want to have to drain any of the AC. These two points down here and up here it's connected but I've swung the power steering cooler out of the way and I like what Audi's done here. I disconnected uh, 
the coolant lines to the heat exchanger, but we'll get that to in a minute. All these lines look like they're going to swing out of the way. Um, I, I've yet to swing it out of the way, but so far it looks like it's going to allow us to do that. So again, so what we're doing is we're going to pull the AC heat exchanger out. It bumps into this. Take this top part off and this will expose your bolts uh, to take this just uh, like I described. A um, couple things. These are T15s. You have to take those out. Um, what you might notice is a lot of the bolts that I'm taking out, um, I'm just putting back in the place uh, where they're located. I used to, for years and years, go and put them in a tray. And you kind of find yourself when, when you're putting the car back together, it's time to put everything back in. You know, most of these nuts, bolts, and screws, you'll kind of remember where they go. But if you put them back where where they originally located, everything from uh, the the... You know, the screws right here that held uh, this AC bracket on uh, to the side. Um, you know, you, there's no guesswork. It's right there. And when you go to put it back, you know, the, uh, the screws need to be there. So the next thing we're going to go is we want to take off the heat exchanger. Um, pretty easy. Two, two hoses up top and up bottom. Just pulled them out, drained it in a bucket, and then I drained... Um, the coolant out of the radiator uh, as well. So now we're going to take and uh, remove our heat exchanger, which continues to look like a, a maybe a T27 Torx. Uh, it's no longer hooked up to anything, so we're going to pull this off and go on to the next some step. Of the next steps to taking the core support off. Uh, so there's some electrical things you'll have to undo. These are 10 millimeters. These, uh, you'll notice there's a notch in them, so when you take it out, don't be too concerned about that. These two electrical connections will need to be disconnected. Up here, there's a bumper support bolt uh, and sleeve that you'll need to take out. I'll show you, I have something mocked up on the other side to show us how to do that. Uh, we're gonna need to take this bolt off. Uh, the majority of these are going to be 13s. 13, 13, 13. We have over here, let's zoom in a little bit better, is this is the core support, then the body panel. As you can see here, this sleeve and then nut, the sleeve comes through these two and the nut's on the back, and you'll see I have this 15 millimeter uh, socket. And we're just going to loosen and remove that. And then uh, we'll come back and continue getting out some of the other bolts. Some of these wires. As you'll notice here, this is notched, so when it comes time to put the uh, the wires back in the case, you'll know where it goes. We unplugged these two uh, wires from our access panel box here. This flips up. So now what we're gonna be doing is I just took out this T20 screw that goes to this electrical panel. Once you take the screw out, you pull up, and it's gonna reveal these three uh, 13 millimeter bolts. Uh, and we have these on each here, side. Here and here. Yep. And then again over here, I removed that these two, so it's just this. So once you take and loosen these, you'll see that the core support, we can pull it out a little bit. There you go, see? So it's really starting to get loose at this point. So to, to drain the radiator, um, so you don't run into having fluid everywhere. I don't know if you can see that very well. There you go. So for those of you that might not know some of the tricks on draining an Audi radiator, let me put this back up here. Okay, sorry. I probably should have prepped this before I did it. Okay, the radiator hose is off, right? So this clip right here that you see, get my pointer. This clip right here is normally down like that. If you want to pull, as you can see, I've pulled the uh, this feed to the radiator and this one off. If you want these 
to if you want the hose to come off if you want the hose to come off this collapsed clip here has to come up you just pull up that releases it and then you'll have to push this back off here now what I do to get it to come off because it doesn't just want to come off very easy is I spray it with penetration lube and then I get a blunt square or blunt screwdriver and I just tap and you can kind of see the witness marks where I tapped it to get it to come back off because yeah they don't want to come off very easy so a, spray it with penetration a line from the reservoir it runs through the core support there's side one you unplug and then over here where you see my finger perfect it's got um, it's got a multi-use clamp on it we just pulled that off and it comes right off so that connection you have to take off on the other side there is what you're going to see here this if I'm not mistaken uh, I think this is for the airbags uh, not important really what it's for so much as it is how do you get this clip off so this is tucked underneath it's kind of hard to get to so what you're gonna have to do is what you see me doing here well you'd think it'd be a lot easier now that I actually have it in my hand this tab pulls back if I can not be here a month and a half okay so I pulled the tab back see how this tab is up now and then it pushes down and pulls out and then you just push the tab back in but that's uh i removed it so you could see there's one over here and then there's one again on the other side which i've already taken out so it looks like we're ready to pull it i'm going to have my camera assistant we're going to put the camera down and see if we can't uh get this to come off but like i said at this point all these screws here are out these, I, that, I call that an M10 Torx it, earlier is a triple square, an M10 triple square. Uh, the 13 millimeter bolt crack, the upper support bars are out. Uh, lower radiator hose, there's two over here. There's uh, a radiator hose connections here. We took our coolant line off and uh, I think we're ready to pull it out. Like I said, the only thing we're going to run into is uh, the headache here from uh, um, the hood. The hood release but we're gonna mess with that and we'll check so back here's in how this works there's tabs on either side of this and then there's tabs in the back here on either side those need to be pried up and then this cover comes off once the covers off here's the cable right here and it's it's just it's in there via and that's it. And once you pull that off, that's it. Now your core support. If you take all your stuff with it and remove the cable for your light, that's it. Your core support's off 100%. And show us the front of the engine if you want. Um, let me drag it out of the way. And now, So now we have access to the, what are you doing? Now we have access to the whole front of the engine here. You can see where everything was at that, uh, that we were trying to get to. And it actually looks, uh, it looks pretty good. So yeah, that's how we get the, uh, the front bumper and core support off. And all right, now we're gonna move on to the, uh, the rest of, uh, of our project here.